I wish to enjoy us to offer only useful so that the meeting is recorded. Thus, we may not have adequate time to enter new inquiries or clarifications not captured before today, 23rd of April 2021. Action remains Monday, 26th April 2021. While consequent April 2021, I would like to assure all proponents that the legally undertaking as the ministry is poised to partner with the most responsive proponents in the development and management of these rules. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Asen. I now would like to invite the Director of Transport, ICRC, Mr. Emmanuel Onwode, for his opening statement. Mr. Miyako. Um, thank you very much. Uh, as of the PDT, our protocols uh, duly observed. We are gathered here this uh, afternoon to uh, provide a process which uh, kick started a long few weeks back. The Minister of uh, Works and Housing and is an which is the agency of the federal government responsible for attracting private sector. Investment into both green field and brownfield infrastructure assets in the country. Issues about 12 outline business instances are ready to go for procurement. They are financial. Related work, therefore, issues those roads. That's why we have worked and we have it to ensure that as to finish is in line with international best practices. And we, as regulators, will ensure to put our seal on a process like that. So, I want to commend all of you. I also want to say that still under review and uh, in the process of time, we will ensure that in line with the timeline set, we are able to comply as much as possible with uh, those uh, timelines. So I want to commend the members of the PDT. Thank you very much. Much, Mr. Emmanuel. Yusuf. Please, our technical session and begin a slight adjustment to the the sound. We'll deal with you shortly.
Hello, a distinguished online participant to show that the sound is okay at your end. Oh, so that's fine. Oh, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Is there anyone that has issues with the sound? Just let's see your hand up. Thank you very much. It appears we are good to go. Thank you very much. We have come to the interactive session and our panelists for this session. Please, as I mentioned, your name just wave to our participants. Architect and Imola Hassan. As we have heard earlier, she's the head of Public Private Partnership Unit in the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. We also have Mr. Emmanuel Onwardi, Director of Transport Infrastructure, ICRC. Thank you very much. Those are the two people that will be taking the questions primarily. And any of us can chip in. Also, have Mr. Jamu of the ICLC waiting at the other end. While I'm waiting on this end, too, I believe we are, we are going to have a very, very inspiring and enlightening session. So, to coordinate the interactive session is Mr. Emmanuel Onwardi. And so, I will see over the, the mic. Invite into the mic, Mr. Onward, to anchor the interactive session. So, Mr. Emmanuel, over to me. I think the stage is now to begin to take some of those questions. But just to add that uh, we, the committee has carefully in as well as uh, some questions that the ICRC will have to provide um, answers to. But because of time, and bear in mind that um, at the end of the day, the process requires that we still send a formal to the prospective bidders. We will then be able to focus on a few of them. Those ones that we consider very precious help you know, the process from now going forward. So if you do not get um, us to respond to those questions at this time, uh, then therefore means that when in a couple of days to come, you will surely get the full uh, response to the entire question. Then on the list here, a question was asked with respect to uh, uh, the will have to provide requested clarifications below regarding the RFQ for value added concessions under the Highway Development Initiative. Clarification one is that consortium member limits. Session for which we are asking figures. We also have the onboard asset as well as the value marketplace, which is not what is being addressed at this point. But suffice to say that the number of consortium members is not restricted to five. This can be seen on page 14. Uh, 6.5.8. That this is not expected that we are in at the moment. Whilst trying to provide answers to the questions, five members are elected in the RFQ is for the Provide works, operations, and maintenance requirements 
considered as members to the consortium. I think the, the, the question is sticking. And it comes to that, except that it is a part of the consortium, the joint bidding agreement. And here again, please take note that this agreement is not required at this material point in time. You know, you can identify the members of consortium, the consortium member that you want at this stage. We will do that at the uh, uh, first we will not be eligible for the question X, and from X, it talks about joint bidding agreement, which is also on page 55. Uh, our specific response to that would be that a specific process and functions or role that has uh, uh, situation for the potential situation and provide the strength of the consortium, either financially technically or even as a silent member uh, in terms of approaching the, the question, we have gone through the RFP section, uh, and they're saying that um, they will require an extension of time. Essentially, they're saying that because of the effects of COVID, it has become difficult to get uh, agreements, and therefore they have asked for an extension of time to be granted to them. Our response to it is that. Uh, we'll look at a couple of other questions about four or five of them asking for similar extension of time. As you very well know, this is uh, the amount of very deep uh, justification to ensure that we're able to allow that extension. Bear in mind that the purpose of this transaction is to ensure that we have an aggressive overall timeline. We have elections coming by the corner. We have a few other commitments of public of our principles. At the same time, we have to put other um, issues in favor disposed to The response to that is that we will consider it. And uh, look at the justification that has been provided uh, and see uh, as to what extent you can extend, you know, this. Uh, so we'll leave it until you find that we'll look at it as jointly with the ICRC as well as the other stakeholders, considering the justification and then come up with uh, a more realistic or a suitable response to that. Um, so that for that response, we consider that as very important to bring up at this uh, 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 pre-bid conference. The next one, on sections on sections, five point six point five point eight. Where it was quoted that maybe restricted to five members. I think we've dealt with that. I uh, will go to the next one. They are asking here that uh, in respect of the RFQ for value added under this concession, can a local um, contractor participate 
in spirit in more than one consult and question and the answer is yes a widespread uh, response to this uh, uh, RFQ and we're able to pre-qualify those that meet the specific requirements. So the committee under working under the PDT, under the watch of the Honorable Minister of Transport himself, will be happy to announce that yes, you can have uh, the local contracts participate in work and work and be a member to more than one, but not lead member in one. That way we can manage the expect of that. The other question also is about can a local consultants or engineering firm work with different consortiums? And the answer is that the local firm engineering can work as subcontractors to different consortiums. However, such firm cannot be part of any uh, other consortium as the case may be and therefore not eligible to submit um, application by itself. So, so that, that would be the response. Um, the other question which we thought we should also bring up here is uh, if two companies have parent subsidiary relations, different and independent legal representatives and directors, and these two companies join different is to say yes uh, as much as possible. We do not want to eliminate uh, prospective uh, bids. Bear in mind that at this stage of the procurement, we are basically trying to pre-qualify bidders. Uh, into the room as pre-qualified uh, members. Thereafter, we we'll issue them with a request for proposal. At that point, they will generally be bidding for the roots. Okay, so it will not, not be appropriate to disqualify them based on that, particularly abroad, but locally, they have been commission. So we'll be glad to next one uh, is to the fact that the question has been asked. Uh, we read yours as it pertains to collaboration between the Funeral Ministry of Works and the ICRC. After going through the details, etc., would this be under the ongoing asset approval or value added concession? We are asking if the process we are, we are going through on the bonded assets approval deals specifically with like you have the value marketplace where you have you know people coming in to, to do select uh, services and all that. Where it, Sure that value for money is guaranteed assets to the extent that they can recover their investment. Uh, so I think that, that that answers that and not the onboarding assets approval, which has to do with the use of a open spaces. The next question, which we thought we should bring, is that. They've asked the question on behalf of them, perhaps more than one consortium of bidders, or whether each sole financier is required to commit to a single consortium. Do you know how this is played? We expect that the, 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 the financier project is as a consortium to invest in and to support financially. So in most cases, we do not expect that the equity holders in the consortium. Now, in one or two cases, you find uh, leading financial uh, services firm also to 
taking up equities in small quantities. Because the answer to it is that if it's to a single consortium, if they are using their balance sheet. However, for the PPP program that we're looking at, we encourage the fact that we're able to get financiers look at a wide range of investment opportunities. As long as it doesn't stretch them, and it's, as long as the, the exposure risk at this point, you know, it's not negatively uh, to say that they would encourage, uh, would encourage uh, those uh, their support uh, projects along those routes without restrictions. However, one of the things that they use their infrastructure, uh, they, are, they, are, they have to look at what they can actually carry on their, on their books. Um, okay, so the other question also, which is also very important, um, uh, section, the question is on uh, uh, whether, It says, will the winning bidder have the opportunity to appoint a technical auditor on the works already performed by the existing contractor? So this will be the RFP stage. We expect that uh, due to the they will probably visit the site and collect a lot of information. Uh, as much as possible, they will have the, the, the privilege of even engaging independent uh, consultants to look at the project before they submit their final technical and financial. But this is the process that is handled at the RFP stage. Um, at the RFQ, we are trying to pre-qualify bidders. And so I think we went on to answer that question. Then we'll take the one that says that uh, for curriculum vitae, for key personnel, you know, where it does not provide any expertise requirement. Can more clarity be provided on the positions we expect the consortium to demonstrate in our series? So I think if you look at the relevant section, it already explains that. Uh, so what we've done is that we've reduced that to five years so that we're able to accommodate um, you know, the more um, you know, qualified uh, personnel. I think that I will come with the addendum that will be further submitted on that. So as a clarity that uh, we'll look at uh, for key persons, etc., they'll be looking at five years. Uh, yeah, so this is another one. We Are we correct in assuming that this requirement refers to projects that encompass all of the above, which is highways, expressways, bridges, uh, causeway, bridges, tunnels, or projects that fall within any of the named categories or that are similar. For instance, the highways, the express, etc. cetera. Um, so if we can provide that clarity for in, within the clarifies it, uh, whether it's highway, whether it's expressway, whether it's uh, bridges and tunnels, causeways, the what we're looking at for is any project that cuts that's in you know that cuts within any of those categories. So it must not be all. But when you have all, please go ahead and make those uh, submissions, and we'll be happy to to receive them as much as possible. If we still have time to take other ones. Uh, a lot of the questions we've considered. Uh, uh, things that we can send across so we don't uh, waste too much time. Uh, they are not. Sorry, I need to have some people to did not get the distance. There was a hearing problem. Oh, okay. So, which one did it? So, at this point, I invite Mr. Emmanuel to take over the Summarize again all the questions they have answered. So much because we have limited time. We don't have as much time as we had. So you will 
answering the questions. Some of our participants joined after you have started. So please help us to summarize what you presented and emphasize the very, very important questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, I was uh, trying to check to be sure that we are within the Sorry? We have 13 minutes more. So what I'll probably do is to run a summary, like you have mentioned, to see to the extent that what I read. I started by saying that the the focus on this uh, at this stage is to look at the VAC, which is the value added concession. The first question. That we received was the fact that of the drivers coming in, and these service providers are not seen as members of the of the um, of the consortium. And for purpose of clarity, the five members that was mentioned were talking about in terms of what is the number that we can evaluate. So if you come in with more than five, the committee will look at five and evaluate them. We qualify them based on the submissions they have made. Now, for other ones, we will regard them as service providers. So that was the first thing I said. And I also tried to provide uh, how we regard the service providers to the extent that they're not considered as a member of that consortium. Uh, so that was the first one. The second one we talked about was that the fact that the uh, there are roles to be played, uh, which consortium members must possess, must play, and then fulfill all the functions and ensure that they add value. So if you're looking at a consortium member that does not bring value, I think those ones I will give you value. The next question was talking about respect to extension of time. And they have said that The effect of COVID, uh, which have made it difficult for them to they are still closed according to what they are persuasive letters. We have a month extension for one month, that's about four or five weeks. So what I've said to them is that it's not uncommon to have requests like this coming as we run our procurement processes. And the general argument is that we're going to review it and decide on the stability of the months or whatever number of days. But surely the committee is favorably disposed to an extension which will come to you latest on or before the 28th of, uh, of, uh, of May. Am I correct? Of April. Of April, sorry. So that's a specific response to that. Another question has said that uh, can a local uh, contractor participate in more than one consortium? And, and the answer to that is say participate and be a member in more than one, be able to lead, be a lead member in more than one. So, so so that's where we're able to balance it. So you can be a member in more than one, but for the purposes of this, please be a lead in one so that we can pre-qualify you. Or be a member in more than one so that we can also pre-qualify you. And then we we'll take the other steps as we go ahead. However, such cannot be part of any other consulting and will not be eligible to be Okay, so where you have participated with so many as sub to so many. Um, um, okay, uh, another question which we thought was necessary to highlight was the fact that um, where two companies have parent subsidiary relationships, 
that have different and independent legal representatives and directors. Can these two companies join uh, different consortia? And we talk about them saying, uh, 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 you know, any company at this stage, where they are fully registered legal entities in the, within the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and they have their papers, they are free to submit their bids. We are not going to eliminate them. This is a pilot phase of this uh, HDMI. And as much as possible, we want to encourage, uh, in line with the um, executive order, to encourage local participation as much as possible in our road infrastructure process uh, as much as possible. So that answer is yes. Uh, please take note. Um, a few of the companies have asked this, especially for those of them that have their parent companies uh, abroad. Uh, another question came to say whether we are running the VAC on the onboard asset approval. And I said to them, uh, yeah, there are three of them. We have the value market rates, we have the onboard asset approval, and we have the value added concession. The minister is about the VAC, which is the value added concession. And that's why we've launched the um, RFP, RFQ. Uh, for the value for the bond assets approval, essentially you are looking at the use of open uh, spaces where you identify an open space and then you then bring in some sort of business ideas to, to the approval for that. So what we're running now is value market. Please look at the other queue again and then make your decision. With respect to financing, we have said that that will be open where the financier, we do not expect anyway, uh, is able to backgrow more than one road. We'll be, we'll be happy to, to have that happen. At the end of the day, the beauty of this transaction is that they're able to get a financial close. And that is what will interest the government. Uh, projects are packaged in such a manner that they're able to attract needed investments. Uh, bear in mind that this is a brown field, essentially. We have still in existing roads. And we are hoping that we are able to attract the much needed infrastructure financing to address this uh, gap. Uh, so the financiers that come in can actually uh, be able to do more than one uh, as much as possible. Um, now the other question that I spoke about was with respect to the key the, uh, curriculum vitae of uh, key personnel. And I said I will try to look at it to make sure that uh, we we'll bring it down to five years. So we expect that for technical expertise of key personnel, we we'll bring it down so we can have more and more people pre qualified at this stage to come in. All relevant positions are as it relates to the technical and financial requirement as stated in the RFQ. So I suggest that you look more to the RFQ. And uh, if there are further clarification, you can please send us an inbox. And then the final response will, will come to you uh, as we do that. So very quickly, I've talked about, very quickly, I've talked about um, uh, the assumption that if you have the uh, capability in any of them, it's railway, uh, sorry, highways, expressways, bridges, crossways, tunnels, you are not required to have them. So that becomes easy for you to, to move on. So we're looking at projects that fall within any of those categories. Because the question has specifically asked, been asked to say, are they expected to have all of it or just also if you have if your project fall on any of this, please go ahead and submit your your RFQ. Uh, the other question is uh, Please, can we submit applications for more than one route in this project? Uh, so the RFQ is not route specific. The RFQ is not route specific at this stage. At this stage, we are really basically trying to pre-qualify the bidders. Then we'll bring them into the room as we qualify bidders, and they will issue that is issued that enables them to go ahead and submit both their technical and their 
financial bits for this transaction. I've been told I have just four minutes left. Uh, so, so this RFQ is not rule specific, just to provide that clarity. A lot of calls, a lot of questions have been asked. Uh, please look at the requirements of the RFQ, pay attention to the, the requirements, specific requirements. The truth is that until you are qualified, you cannot submit a bid. So it's important that you pay particular attention to the requirements of this uh, RFQ. Um, the other question also, which is uh, uh, which is uh, also very important, FP be published. Well, this will be communicated <laughs> to our bidders. I mean, let's go past let's go past the RFQ and then the the timeline will then be made public for. So, so imagine that we consider an extension to the RFQ, it then implies that we have to then extend the timing for the um, for the for the RFQ. Um, 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 Okay. Okay. We can go ahead. Okay. The other thing to say is that uh, um, yes. thank you very much, Mr. Manuel. We have come to the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank asking your questions on the portal. So go ahead and continue to interact with us. And you are sure that you will receive answers to all your concerns. Thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to invite Kabi Bola Sain, the head of PPP unit of the Federal Minister of Work and Housing, for our closing remarks. Thank you, Mrs. Bola. I wish to thank every member of the PDT and indeed all participants at this. For your effective participation. May I assure that if there is consideration for extension of date of the communicated in due course. For now, the closing date remains 3rd of May 2021. Meanwhile, it should be emphasized that any clarification or Equity or inquiry not received on or before 26th of April 2021 may not be entertained before Wednesday 28th April 2021. Furthermore, proponents are encouraged to sign or partner with others to form consortiums in order to meet the allergies of problems on the, the timing and, and this should show you that everything is going to be according to what we have said, what we have promised. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you.